It's not really a school, it's more family. We have 23 faculty, 150 kids. Since we're such a small school, we are able to get to know our students, but also our colleagues um, on a different level. There's a real personal relationship. We have 77 acres of land, and we're usually outside. Even if it's zero out, we're outside. We have an emergent curriculum. We develop our curriculum around our students' interests. And having that, I think, really is, you know, the difference. Every teacher is like, I love what I do. I love where I work. I'm so happy here. A SARS-like virus, which has infected hundreds in China, has now reached the United States airports. And then COVID happened. All educators were in this state of, like, what's happening. Our public sector unions, right, we were able to negotiate terms and conditions. At Parker, they didn't have a voice to do that. The length of our day was increased. Obviously, we need to wipe down tables, but teachers were being pulled also to do temperature checks in the morning instead of planning. That increases our workload. We brought a concern up, but nothing was really changed. Parker was so small, and there was just things that we didn't have, no policies. I gave my mom my kidney, and when the kidney group asked me what the policy was and if I would have the time off, because they wanted to make sure that I was gonna have a job afterwards, when we, I asked, we didn't really have one. Like, well, what do I do? Like, how do I get time off? It's so stressful. Private sector workers, they're at will. They can be told tomorrow, you know what, we don't need you anymore. You're costing us too much money. At Parker, you get a letter at the end of the school year saying if you're going to be welcome back next year and at what cost. Some years it would uh, be not until the very start of school, so we weren't even sure if we would have a job. With COVID, they called me. And then I knew something was really wrong. She had been there 12 years. She was a gym teacher and a coach. She runs the entire summer camp program. They said, you're gonna do all of that, but for $12,000 less. And if you don't like it, you can look elsewhere. I know Darcy from high school, so I reached out to her on Facebook Messenger, and I said, I'm so sorry to hear about what's happening. Have you or your colleagues ever thought about forming a union? I didn't have anything to lose, so I talked to everyone. We all came together and said, we're not being heard. Is this something we need to do? It was just like that. Here's how you fix it. They said, they're all in. We just don't know how to do it. And so I said, great, well, that's my job. Hey, everyone. Hey, looks like we're going to have a full house. I'm excited. We did all of this on a Zoom because we had so much support from faculty. We asked the board to voluntarily recognize their union. I was asked to hand the letter over to their head of school at the time. I'm like, can anyone go with me? And Jim's like, you should all go in there with your shirts on. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, we're, we're very small. The letter said, we are forming a union. You have 24 hours to respond if you are going to allow it. And the board didn't allow it. So the school ramped up their boss fight. All of Parker faculty got phone calls from past board members. It was a lot of, it's Parker, we don't need a union. And they said, nice it would come in and just, you know, manhandle Parker. You won't have the autonomy that you currently have, and parents will want to pull their children. And then Parker sent out correspondence to parents about the union. I think they were really banking on parents saying, no, we don't want this. And it was the opposite. Thank you for your communication regarding the board's decision to not voluntarily support the unionization effort by Parker teachers. Unfortunately, this decision is a mistake that I hope can be fixed. If teachers don't have a voice in governance in order to feel respected, there is a problem at Parker. If teachers are not properly compensated for their Herculean efforts, there is a problem at Parker. These problems are all problems for our family 
because we love this school. We love the environment and most especially the teachers. Which are Parker's greatest resource. Our family stands with the teachers. I urge you to do so as well. I was thrown back by all the support that we had. I, I, it was uh, surprising. They were so scared that the parents were going to think less of them for pursuing their legal right to form a union. So when the parents showed up for them, it just put so much wind in their sails, and it put smiles back on their faces. And that was the moment where I knew we were going to win. We all had to vote, and I counted so Sarah could send them in. And I'm like, oh no, someone didn't vote. We need everyone to vote. And I, then I realized it was me. <laughs> I took the ballots to the post office, and then we had like the Parker way of a celebration. I'm out there snowshoeing to make a path so we could all get out there. And <laughs> we had a bonfire. We made it. We had made such a huge step. It brought us together as a community, and we're already so close. But wow, we really became a lot closer. I still love where I work. Yeah, probably more. <laughs>